I have tears once in a while. That's not because I'm weak. Let me tell you what, I was a combat training officer in the Vietnam era. I've never been accused of being a crybaby, but God has given me his heart towards America, towards our families, towards our churches. We're literally at a point where God has said it's after midnight. And he's held his hand out like this and he said, it's my will that none should perish but all should come to repentance. That's the only reason the judgment of God has not come upon this nation today because everything's in place. Earlier you heard about the forces of darkness and those, those powers and principalities in high places. Well, you'll see some of them. You'll see their names. Satan has a whole army of people. They work around the clock. They work 24 hours a day. They don't slumber or sleep. They have an objective. That's to bring everybody in this country into, into slavery. Satan wants, in, in UNESCO, under the, under the year of the child, it was all children are our children. He wants all the children on earth. He wants everybody. He wants to destroy everybody. They have, many of them have no idea they're serving him. But Jesus said, you're for me or you're against me. We're either fighting for the forces of light and darkness and truth or believing a lie and, and we're doing nothing. And I've got to share that right from the beginning because Jesus said a couple things. In Matthew 24, the very first thing when the disciples said, what shall be the signs of the end? He said, first of all, let no man deceive you. He said later on in that verse, a couple of verses later, there will be many deceiving many. They will come deceiving many. There will be a little later on 24, he says, there will be much deception. We're living in a time of deception, people. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. That's exactly why tonight you're going to see everything on a screen instead of, of, of just hearing me talk up here. Because I'm not out to deceive. I'm out to share the truth that God has given me with the people and hopefully many of them will wake up and they'll be called to action, just like Gideon's army. Gideon's army, there were 32,000 people that, that wanted to be in the army. 22,000 went home because they had more important things to do, like paint their house or they were afraid. 9,700 got down to the riverside and they started drinking the water. All they were concerned about is physical gratification. 300 people, less than 1% literally lapped the water with one hand and had their hand on the sword with the other one. They were alert and they were aware and they were vigilant. That lukewarm verse in, in Revelations that Jesus said, I'd rather have you hot or cold rather than lukewarm, speaks of a fervency, a dedicated, a commitment is fervency. The lukewarmness is apathy. Lukewarmness is I don't really care. It's sort of like Hezekiah when the prophet Isaiah came to Hezekiah. He said, "You know what? The Babylonians are going to come. They're going to take you, and they're going to take your children away from you." And what did Hezekiah say? He said, "If that's God's will, so be it." But then he said in his own heart, "As long as I live my life in peace and safety, who cares?" There's a lot of parents today saying they love their children with their mouth. But their actions are nowhere near close to their heart. Their actions are nowhere close to what they say. Jesus said to Jer to Je in, through Jeremiah the prophet, he said, you, you people in Judah, your, your mouths are close to me, but your hearts are far from me. Many of us, are, it's easy to say, I love you to our wives, but do we really love them? Are we willing to, to love our wives as Christ loved the church and give himself for the church? Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. I'd recommend we take the Word of God seriously. The last two years, I found out how straight and how narrow. I just told you 300 out of 32,000. That's less than 1%. As in the days of Noah, so shall it be coming of the Son of Man. How many people entered the ark when the door was closed? Eight. How many people are on the earth? Some people say 5 billion. Some people say 7. Some people say 14. That's not a very high percentage. When the children of Israel left Egypt, there were 2 to 4 million people. How many people entered the promised land? Two. When, Je when the disciples asked Jesus, he says, How, is, it hard to enter the are there gonna, is, is it hard to enter the kingdom of God? He says, you bet it is. Straight is that gate and narrow is that path, and few enter therein. He says, in fact, you have to strive to enter therein. Strive is the same word as agonize as he did in the garden when he sweat blood. Now what's happened over the years, the church has taken that gate and they've made it about this wide. 
And many people go down that little sawdust trail or they raise their hand at a meeting and they say, I, I've committed my life to Christ. And then they go on doing their own thing. Jesus said, if you love, not all who say, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of God, only those who are doing my will. Those are the ones that are going to enter. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. That's what he said. So it's serious, people. When that door is finally closed, there are going to be many knocking on the outside calling him Lord. And I'd ask each of you, as you watch this, you can see how clearly the time is short. The day is, the, there's a time coming when we can no longer work because the night is almost upon us. It's only by, again, by the grace of God that it isn't here. Let's, uh, let's look and see uh, exactly what, the, what I'm talking about by looking at this video on uh, our various... Uh, people speaking on the video, they'll tell you, they'll talk about a thing called the New World Order. So let's begin the production. after me. I, William Jefferson Clinton, do solemnly swear. I, William Jefferson Clinton, do solemnly swear. That I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States. That I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States. And will to the best of my ability. And will to the best of my ability. Preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. Preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. My fellow citizens, today we celebrate the mystery of American renewal. This ceremony is held in the depth of winter. But by the words we speak and the faces we show the world, we force the spring. A spring reborn in the world's oldest democracy that brings forth the vision and courage to reinvent America. When our founders boldly declared America's independence to the world and our purposes to the Almighty, they knew that America, to endure, would have to change. Communications and commerce are global. Investment is mobile. Technology is almost magical, and ambition for a better life is now universal. Profound and powerful forces are shaking and remaking our world, and the urgent question of our time is whether we can make change our friend and not our enemy. Thomas Jefferson believed that to preserve the very foundations of our nation, we would need dramatic change from time to time. Well, my fellow Americans, this is our time. Let us embrace it. There is no longer a clear division between what is foreign and what is domestic. The world economy, the world environment, the world AIDS crisis, the world arms race, they affect us all. Today, as an old order passes, the new world is more free but less stable. Communism's collapsed has called forth old animosities and new dangers. Clearly, America must continue to lead the world we did so much to make. While America rebuilds at home, we will not shrink from the challenges nor fail to seize the opportunities of this new world. Together with our friends and allies, we will work to shape change lest it engulf us. When our vital interests are challenged or the will and conscience of the international community is defied, we will act. With peaceful diplomacy whenever possible, 
with force when necessary. But our greatest strength is the power of our ideas, which are still new in many lands. Across the world we see them embraced and we rejoice. Our hopes, our hearts, our hands are with those on every continent who are building democracy and freedom. Their cause is America's cause. We 